Hey guys, welcome back to the third video of Q&A where we are going to discuss few of the repeated automation interview questions. So today I have three questions uh, and uh, everything is from Java and uh, I mean two questions from Java and one question from Cucumber. So how to prevent a method from override or to override? So how we can prevent a method to get override? That is the most repeated asked one. And what is the difference between given, when and then? And we have to guess the output of a program. So we have this program here and we have to get the output of this. Like we have to explain what is the output of this. So pause the video and try to get the output of this video. And later on when I explain, just check whether it's correct or not. Coming back to the question, first question, we are going to see the override. So override in the sense, of course, we need two class. So let me create a class called B and another class called A. And and B is going to extend the A class here. And within the A class, I'm going to write a, a very small function like void int get number. And we'll say like um, return zero, right? So this is what we are, um, I mean, not void, it should be int, sorry for that. So int get number and here we are returning the zero. Now if I copy and paste the same thing within the B class, then it is known as overwrite, right? So this is what overwrite and here you can see uh, in the Eclipse also we are getting something like overwrites from the day three A class, right? Just to make sure it is correct, we can use the override annotation so that we can understand this method has been overridden. And I'll just change the implementation as one here. Now the question is, how do we prevent this? So we have two options. One, we can make this method as a private. That means, of course, we cannot share this method outside of this class. In that case, of course, we cannot do the override. But people don't want or don't expect this answer. They want something else. And that is very easy. We can make the function as final. That means it is like, uh, one time declarations we cannot override if a function is final we cannot override so here you can see cannot override the final method from a right so this is the two solutions one we can make the method signature as a private or the final okay so i hope you got the answer for the first one now let's go and see the second one so what is the difference between given when and then so these three keywords are used in cucumber or we can also say like it's the syntax of joking now given in the sense it's like your preconditions for example given when the user load the url and when is like when your executions or when your test actually meets the scenario for example in a login test case um, loading the url or loading the browser is going to be your precondition we can set that in a given and then when I say like when user enters the or when user clicks on the login button, correct? So when in the sense when the actual test case starts and then it's basically your outcome like it can be of positive. It, can, it should be of positive. Then in the sense it's like positive, but in the sense it's like negative and it's basically supporting condition for each and every lines or the jerk in sentences basically, right? That's it. Now, lastly, we have this, what is the output? So basically we have a program here. Um, and if you have guessed, then it's fine or else let me explain. So here we have string s1 equal to same thing like let code and s2 also has the same thing let code. So what is this? This like we are checking the reference. So whenever we use double equals, that means we are checking the references where s1 and s2 are indifferent because this is literal and this is object. So this will be in the heap and this will be in the string pool. So when I say double equals, of course, it's going to return me false. And when I say dot equals, that means it is going to check the values, not the references or the memory address. Then it is, of course, it's going to return me true. And here is the complicated. So when I say S2 assign to the S1, that means I am storing the object in the literal. So what will happen means both will now become the object type or the or the last reference address will be mapped to the S1. So in that case, when I say S1 double equals S2, that should return me true now. Okay, because both the address will have the same address, both the variables or the objects will have the same addresses. In that case, it should be also true. And this is of course true because we are checking the value and both will have the same value. 
let me run and show you so here you can see as discussed first one is false because it is going to check the references and later on everything is true because all the things are now same just to uh, make you more clear i'm just going to use the identity hash code to show you like the memory references like that okay so i'm just going to use the system dot identity hash code okay and here i'm going to pass the s1 and then followed by the s2 okay if i run this now here you can see that s1 is in different memory and s2 is in different memory so when we use double equals it checks the references not the value so that is the reason we are getting false and here we are using dot equals and that is the reason it's true because we are checking the value not the references addresses right and when i say s2 equals to s1 let's print the s1 identity hash code and check what it's going to be so it's, it will basically do the manipulation so here you can see now the object references is stored to this particular uh, literal variable as well right so in that case double equals in the sense both the references also same so that's why we are getting true and here dot equals obviously it will return always true if the values are same even if you make one change here like if this is going to be your upper case the everything will become like uh, different because of course um, the ascii it works based on the ascii that is the reason it's getting false right that's it so that's it for this video hope you have learned something new like the string concept or maybe the final keyword in method and also the difference between given when and then okay so that's it from my side thanks for watching see you in the next automation interview question very soon any trouble yeah we coming through as one you know i got your back in every way under the sun girl i'll be staring looking at you every single night i just gotta let you know you got an